In this video, we're going to take a look at the Unit 7 Lesson 10 Practice Problems. So number one says, here are two circles. The smaller circle has a radius of lowercase r, a circumference of lowercase c, and a diameter of lowercase d. The larger circle has radius capital R, circumference capital C, and diameter capital D. The large the larger circle is a dilation of the smaller circle by a scale factor of K. So using what we know, write out some different ratios that we know to be um, equivalent. So um, we can start by just, I mean, there's a ton of different ratios you could write here. We know that if we take um, and divide any corresponding parts, they're going to equal down to the scale factor. So we could take and do big R divided by little r would equal big D divided by little d. Um, that would be one we know these um, both equal down to k, the scale factor. You could also um, do something with the circumference. So remember that the circumference divided by the diameter in both will be equal. Okay, so big C divided by little c, or sorry, big C divided by big D equals the little c divided by little d, and these are going to be equal to pi. So if you remember, circumference equals pi times diameter. So if we just divide by the diameter, those will be equal to pi. Um, and you could do the big diameter divided by the big radius is equal to the little diameter divided by the little radius because every diameter is two times bigger than the radius, so these all equal down to two. Okay, so we know those are equivalent. And again, you could come up with multiple other ratios, like you could do R over big R equals little d over big D. Okay, you could flip these around. Um, there's certainly plenty of ratios to come up with here. Number two, Tyler is confident that all circles are similar, but he can't explain why this is true, so help him. So remember the definition of um, similar is that um, two figures are similar if there is a sequence of rigid motion so rigid motions whoops and dilations that takes one um, figure um, that takes one figure onto the other. So we're trying to prove that um, definition. So we're trying to get to that. So if you think about a um, circle, circles only have one length that defines um, how big they are, and that is the radius. So if we were going to make another circle bigger or smaller than the other, okay, we could find the K value, whoops. Um, we could find the K value just by dividing um, the, ra the, ra the radii, okay? So the radius in this one and the radius in this one, there will always be um, a K value to match that. Okay, so if we wanted to figure out what it would, what we would multiply here, you could just do the big radius divided by the little radius, and that would give you your k value, and that is always going to exist, and therefore they're, they are similar. All right, number three, um, circle B is a dilation of circle A. What is the scale factor? Okay, so B is being dilated from A, so we want to take B and divide it by A, so B's radius divided by A's radius, so nine divided by three, the scale factor is three. So what is the length of the highlighted um, arc in circle A? And so you can see that this arc is one fourth of the circle, maybe just by looking at it, that feels right. Um, also 90 divided by 360 does simplify down to one fourth. So we can do one fourth of the whole circumference. And remember circumference is two times pi times the radius. And so we have one fourth of six pi. So we could do six pi over four. 
this would also simplify because both of these divide by two um, to three pi over two. And you could certainly get the decimal version of that if you wanted as well. So then what is the length of the highlighted arc in um, circle B in this larger circle? So now you have a couple options. You could do it a similar way. Okay, so you could do one fourth of the circumference of the larger circle, which is going to be two times pi times nine. So you could certainly go that whole way. Um, you could also take this smaller circle arc length. Okay, so take this smaller arc length and multiply it by three since this is a dilation by a scale factor three. Um, and so then you could get nine pi over two that way. Again, it would be the same thing here because we'd have 18 pi over four, which simplifies to nine pi over two. So what is the ratio of these arc lengths? Um, and so the ratio of those arc, arc lengths is one to three. So the smaller one is one, the larger one is three times bigger. How does the ratio of the arc length compare to the scale factor? It's the same. So I guess I kind of told you that up here. So they are wanting you to not do it this way. Okay, they're wanting you to actually do it with the formula to find out that the arc length is in the same skill factor as the ratio. So when you compare these, it's just three times bigger, which is equal to the skill factor. All right, Kieran cuts out a square piece of paper with side lengths of six inches. My cuts out a paper, so let me draw this square first, actually. All right. Um, so six inches for each side here. And then my cuts out a sector of a circle. Okay, so a sector of a circle. I'm not sure how big of angle it is here, but we'll just draw an, uh, we'll just draw an example so we can fill out some information. Um, and her radius was six inches and she calculated this arc length to be four pi whose paper is larger explain your reasoning so we can find the area of this square run square one pretty easily by multiplying six times six to get 36 inches squared and so now we want to find the area of this sector to decide if it's bigger or smaller than 36. So part of this is, so the arc length is part of the total circumference. So we could look at the actual total circumference, okay, which is two times pi times the radius of six. So the full circumference is 12 pi. And we have four pi. So the portion of our total circumference that we have is four pi. So when we compare this to 12 pi, Okay, you find out that you have four twelfths of the circle or one third of the circle. So this is one third of the circle. So I definitely did not draw that to scale. Um, one third of a circle is more like this. But we have one third of the circle. So then we're going to want to do the same proportion of the area. Okay, so we'll do one third of the total area. And remember, you do area by taking pi times the radius squared, so pi times six squared. So this little sector area will equal one third of 36 pi. And one third of 36 pi is 12 pi. So we know this one is bigger than 36 because 12 times pi, remember pi is 3.14. So that's bigger than three. Well, three times 12 is 36, so 12 times something bigger than 3 is going to be bigger than 36. So um, my's is larger. And you can certainly multiply this out with your calculator and get the decimal so that you can see that it's more than 36 if you would like. All right, number five, a circle has a radius of 3 centimeters. Suppose an arc on the circle has... Um, a length of, whoops, a length of four pi, what is the measure of the central angle? Okay, so if we have a circle with a radius of three inches, and then we have um, some arc here that's four pi, and I'm not sure exactly where it is, so this may not be drawn to scale, 
Um, but what would the measure of this angle be here? So let's figure out um, 4 pi is part of the total circumference again. So the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, which is 3. So this arc is going to be well larger than what I drew. So the circumference is 6 pi for the whole circle. Okay, and so we want to look at what portion we have. So we have 4 pi out of 6 pi for the full thing. So then this is going to be two thirds of the circle and we're wanting the central angle. So we're wanting to do two thirds of the entire angle of the circle. So what's the entire angle of the circle is 360 degrees and two thirds of that is going to be 240 degrees. So this is very much not drawn to scale. Okay, this would be more like an arc that went all the way over here. So a 240 degree angle would be more like that. A circle with a shaded sector is shown. What is the area of the shaded sector? So we want to figure out what part of the whole circle we have. So we have 50 degrees and then that's out of 360 total degrees. So this is our portion of the circle. And then we want to be finding a portion of the area. So then we'll do a portion of the total area and the total area is pi times the radius squared. And so we'll multiply this. And um, so you can keep it in terms of pi if you would like, or you can, um, multiply and get a decimal. So let's do a decimal this time. So this is going to be, um, fifth, uh, we can do 50 divided by 360. I'm just going to leave this for now. And then two squared is four. So we have times four pi. So do 50 divided by 360 and then multiply by four and then multiply by pi and you will get about um, 1.75 and then units squared since we're in area. So what will the length of the arc be? And so again, you have 50 degrees out of the total of 360 and arc length is a portion of the circumference and circumference formula is two times pi times the radius, which is two. So then this is going to be um, 50 divided by 360 and then times 4 pi, which is the same calculation as it was up top. So this is going to be 1.75, but this is units since it's a linear measurement. So that's 1.75 units this way if we just measure in, the, in a linear measure. And then this one is units squared, how much it covers, how much space it covers. All right, number seven, the towns of Washington, Franklin, and Springfield are connected by straight roads. The towns wish to build an airport um, to be shared by all of them. Where should they build the airport if they want it to be the same distance from each town's center and describe how to find that precise location? So remember the point that's equidistant from any three points. So if we thought about drawing a circle around this, okay, a circumscribed circle. So we want to find the circumcenter. And the way that you do that, the way you find the circum circumcenter is by constructing the perpendicular bisectors of every side. And you don't have to do every side. You could just do two and where they cross, that's where the circumcenter would be. But construct the perpendicular bisectors of the sides. Um, where should they build the airport if they want it to be the same distance from each of the roads? So if we wanted it to be equidistant from the sides. So remember, that would be a circle on the inside of here. So that would be an inscribed circle. So we would want to construct the in center. And the in center is where we would need to construct the angle bisectors. So construct the angle bisectors of each um, angle. All 
All right, then number eight says AC and DB intersect at point E, select all pairs of angles that must be congruent. Okay, so we see these chords here. Um, so angle A, D, um, B. So angle A, oops, let me change colors. All right, <clears throat> angle A, D, B here. And then angle ACB. So these ones should be congruent because they are sharing um, this arc right here. So they're both going to be half of the measure of arc AB. So that will get us um, congruent angles. Right, let's see, ADB, let me just write on it like this so I can erase it easier. So A, um, DB, so this angle here, and um, CAD. So no, CAD goes with this arc. Um, D ADB goes with this arc, so they are not sharing the same arc, so these do not need to be congruent. Angle um, DEA, so angle DEA is here, and angle CEB. So those are vertical angles, so those would be equal to each other. Um, CAD, so CAD here, and CBD here. So CBD is intersecting this arc, CAD is intersecting this same arc, so these would be congruent to each other again. BCA, so um, BCA is this angle, and CBA, no, yes, CBA right here. So no, this one intersects this big arc here, okay? And then the purple angle is intersecting this little one here, so that would be a no.